Yeah. Good. Okay. So, yeah. I'll get Go started. Uh, yeah. With thanking the organizers for giving me a great opportunity to attend this conference. Uh, I wish I could be there uh, in person, but uh, when I had to decide, it was a peak COVID period here. So I had to <laughs> uh, really, uh, I decided not to travel at looking at the current situation, but now things are much better. So, uh, so my talk today is about uh, atomic force microscopy in liquids, looking at uh, several interfacial phenomena such as friction, wear, lubrication, as well as tribochemistry, which occurs uh, under certain uh, conditions in, uh, if you have certain reactive molecules uh, in the lubricants. So uh, this is my current research group at IIT Delhi. A uh, couple of students who did this work uh, are, have graduated, Prashant and Deepak. And some of the work I will show was started actually at UPenn, where I was uh, doing my postdoc with Professor Karpik uh, in collaboration with ExxonMobil. Uh, I'm continuing some of the work here. Apart from that, there are many other areas I've started working on. Uh, for example, looking at injuring alloys and how the microstructure affects friction and wear at nanoscale, uh, lubricant additives interaction with some of the injuring alloys, uh, uh, which I'll be mostly talking about today. Uh, and uh, apart from that, I have started recently some work on silica glasses uh, and looking at how to prevent scratching of uh, these kind of uh, glass uh, materials. And also I am collaborating with some experts in MD simulations to look at how 2D materials uh, coatings on these glasses can prevent scratch and wear of uh, these materials. Uh, I have also started some work on wear of 2D materials, but this is very recent work we have just initiated. Um, and uh, another uh, project I've started recently is uh, looking at biomimetic surfaces, I have a collaborator who makes these very interesting pattern surfaces. So how we can control friction by tuning the interfacial structure by these nano patterns is something also I'm very excited about, but of course it's a, something I very recently started working on. So today I'll be focusing on uh, uh, tribology uh, in liquids, particularly focusing on industrial lubricant additives. Uh, so the goal or the motivation is, is that we have huge amount of friction losses. If you look at uh, automotive engines, for example, around 16 to 17% energy, total energy input is lost due to friction. And it amounts to several hundred billion liters of fuel, which is lost due to friction every year. So even if we make small uh, improvement in frictional losses, we can save uh, a lot of fuel as well as reduce emissions. Uh, so to control friction wear, we use these additives, which are added to the automotive lubricants, uh, which are interacting at the interface and are responsible for affecting friction and wear. So how do we understand the interaction of these additives is very important. So this is the work uh, which I initiated when I was at UPenn uh, in collaboration with ExxonMobil. Uh, so uh, our journey started with looking at GDDP, which is one of the most important uh, lubricant additives, which is added to automotive engine oil. So what it does is that it, it uh, interacts uh, at the sliding interface between two rubbing surfaces, such as piston ring and cylinder wall. And the hypothesis is that some kind of chemical reaction happens at the interface because there is asperity contact. So there's high local pressure, there's temperature, and there is the reactive molecule, which is compressed between these two surfaces, but with these two asperities. But it's not clear what parameter really governs this reaction and how these films grow, what is the kinetics of the growth uh, and so on. So 
uh, we started looking at whether we can look at asperity level interaction of these adjectives. So we uh, used AFM as a tool. So AFM, as we know, we can use it in liquids. So, but this is the first time we have used industrial lubricant additive ZDDP in an AFM cell. And uh, uh, using AFM, we could uh, do this test in a very localized area as shown here. So we are looking at a specific region of interest and sliding the tip under this lubricant. And then also we can change the temperature. So by doing that, we can see if this kind of tribochemistry can be uh, where these reactive lubricant molecules are present. So in this movie, uh, I uh, show you the um, uh, a schematic of how by pressing at a very, at very high pressure, at a, above a critical pressure, can induce this growth of tribochemical film. And then we can image this film by uh, reducing the load and imaging a larger area. So this is how we can quantify the volume of film growth uh, or the amount of film growing on the surface and can measure the volume or the reaction rate as well by looking at how much volume is generated in a given time period. So then we wow. looked at various, uh, uh, su such as dependent uh, on uh, how this film growth is affected by contact pressure as well as temperature. So this is uh, a picture showing you how contact pressure increase is leading to uh, faster growth of the film. <laughs> Means we get higher uh, thickness of the film as the pressure increases. And if you continue to increase pressure, you see a lot of deformation and damage of the film. This is why you see very asymmetric features here, because we are plowing the film, we are uh, damaging the film. So uh, when we look at how to explain this, uh, uh, this uh, tribal film growth, we use a very simple reaction rate theory. And since we are looking at very, uh, we clearly that stress is affecting the reaction rate. So we looked at how stress is affecting this uh, reaction. Uh, so by introducing the stress, combining with activation volume, we can see that if the stress is activating the reaction, the energy barrier should reduce. So by just simply uh, bringing the stress into this equation, we can see whether this actually, this simple model explains our result where stress activation can be taken into account, as well as there's a temperature as a factor. So what we did with AFM is that we independently varied stress, and then in a separate experiment, we, make, we maintain a fixed uh, contact load and varied the temperature. In that way, we can verify whether this simple model works to explain our results. So we looked at uh, the growth rate of the film, which is calculating the volume and dividing by time. So we can calculate how much of volume is growth, growth occurs per second. And then looking at how this growth rate is affected by contact pressure. So we see that there's a very nice uh, fit to the data up to certain point. Beyond that, this fitting doesn't work. Uh, and the reason for that is that up to this pressure where this fit works, we see that the film growth occurs without any significant damage to the tribofilm. But beyond a critical value, a lot of deformation of the film happens. So this, this uh, uh, fitting doesn't work because now you are damaging the film. So the growth is not continuously increasing with pressure. It is saturating due to wear of the film. So in another experiment, we varied the temperature independently uh, and we see that for a given pressure if we vary the temperature again there is an exponential increase in growth rate of the film uh, as the temperature increases and again uh, we verified that the film growth is actually uh, uh, increasing with temperature by directly in situ imaging the tribal film uh, and we get very similar 
delta g values from uh, 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 from what we got from previous experiment where stress was varied. So this confirms that our uh, simple uh, model, which is suggesting that there is a chemical reaction, tribochemical reaction, and it can be monitored. And this is an industrial molecule, which we are trying to see at the aspirity level. So this was quite uh, exciting. Uh, and then uh, several people asked us whether this will uh, be observed only at aspirity level, or this is uh, this can be seen in multi aspirity contact as well. Uh, so, so far, most of the tribology experiments uh, previously were done using tribometers, which is a multi aspirity instrument, but there's no in situ imaging capability uh, in those instruments. Uh, so, what we did was we modified the AFM probe, we mounted a steel microsphere, and then by doing that, we could generate a multi aspirity contact. And the advantage here is that this becomes like a tribometer kind of ball and disc instrument. Uh, and in addition, you can do simultaneous imaging as well because you can track the deflection of the cantilever uh, very precisely. So by doing that, we could uh, 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 do similar tests with a multi aspirity contact using steel and substrate also instead of a simple silicon or iron film, we took an actual steel surface. Uh, so here is uh, a movie which shows the steel microsphere sliding on a steel substrate. And as I said, the advantage is that you can in situ observe the tribofilm growth. So you can see that the tribofilm growth is observed here. And uh, simultaneously, we are measuring friction as well as the thickness of the film, as well as if any wear is happening. All these things can be monitored uh, at the same time without taking the sample out of the system. And friction versus load followed a very nice linear relation. So we could measure the friction coefficient as well. Uh, and we could track in different regions uh, in terms of variability and looking at tribofilm characteristics, whether it varies from one experiment to the other. And by as I said, we can image the tribofilm, we can zoom out and take an image where the, this sliding test was done. And we can clearly see a buildup of uh, a film which is 50 to 100 nanometer thick. Uh, and it looks very similar to what we observed in single aspirate test. In addition, um, the parameters which were used to grow this film in terms of temperature uh, was the same. Uh, so we, in our test, we never observed these films forming at room temperature, which means that you need elevated temperature, whether it is single aspirity or multi aspirity, uh, as well as you need high contact pressure. Of course, in multi aspirity test, we cannot precisely say what kind of pressures are there because there's uh, uh, multiple contacts occurring, but an, on average, uh, we can have some estimate of that. So now, after this, we started looking at, uh, at IIT Delhi. Uh, my students, uh, uh, we collaborated with a group who are experts in this aluminum and magnesium alloys. So we started looking at real engineering alloys because these are used for automotive engines components. So here, the primary phases are basically the aluminum matrix and silicon phase. So this alloy is very important for uh, tribological applications, especially for engine components. And uh, uh, the, uh, the growth mechanisms of ZDDP film has been studied on these alloys for decades, but there's a lot of debate because some people say there's formation of the film on aluminum matrix. Some people say there's, uh, there's no film growth observed in certain experiments. So we tried to do this in situ study uh, and we did a simultaneous sliding test on these two regions, aluminum and silicon alloys, uh, 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 silicon phase. So in a simultaneous sliding, we could directly observe whether this film is forming or not. And our test showed that actually film is forming on both regions. But when we did a careful analysis, we found that there is some difference. So here is a region. You can see that uh, there's silicon phase, aluminum matrix around it, region two and three. 
uh, we look at the thickness of the film. The thickness of the film on aluminum matrix was significantly lower compared to silicon phase. And also the film was very rough, which means this is more patchy compared to silicon phase where the film is more dense. You can see the roughness of the film is much lower. Uh, another test we did that we did a sliding test away from the silicon phase where there's no silicon region, only aluminum matrix. And we saw that there's significant wear of the aluminum starts before we form any film. Uh, so this was very strange to observe because we see aluminum matrix, which is next to silicon. It shows stribofilm growth and much lower friction. But aluminum matrix, where we are sliding away from the silicon phase, we see very high friction and we don't hardly see any tribofilm formation. Uh, so we did a lot of indentation tests and we found that there's no difference in hardness of aluminum very close to the silicon versus away from silicon. So aluminum matrix properties are not very different. So what we believe is that this silicon phase is very hard. So that's where contact pressure is high and tribofilm film form formation starts much easily because it's activating the reaction. And this is allowing us ge generation of a lot of these reactive species which are easily transferred to the surrounding region when we are doing a sliding test. And before we induce wear of aluminum, this species bind to the aluminum and form this film. Whereas in this case, there is no easy activation of the reaction, initiation of the reaction. And before that reaction activation or initiation happens, the matrix wear uh, starts to happen uh, before that. And we start to wear away the material. So this is our hypothesis, but there's no direct evidence unless we do, do some theoretical study. Uh, so we tried to see if we could minimize the wear of this aluminum matrix. So what we did is that we did a collaborative study with Indian Institute of Petroleum where they are growing uh, or they are forming this uh, hexagonal boron nitride nano sheets, which can be dispersed by some functionalization in lubricant. And we combined it with this ZDDP containing hello, lubricant. Hello. Can, can uh, we see hello? that these are small uh, uh, nano particles of HPN. So when we added that to the lubricant, we found that the tribofilm, whether you see close to the silicon phase on aluminum or away from the silicon, you see that tribofilm Hello. formation. S sorry, Nitya, could, could you try yeah. to come closer to your conclusions? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so this is where uh, we see that there's a lot of uh, significant reduction in wear of aluminum matrix. Uh, and also we see that it correlates well with the friction data that we see much lower friction uh, when we have very low wear of the matrix. Uh, so this is significantly lower friction compared to what we saw when there was a wear of the aluminum matrix. And we also found that the, the HPN nanosheets, they bind strongly to the tip. You see that signature of nitrogen and boron near the contact zone, which is somewhere here. Uh, and also there's some adsorbed molecules also. This is why we are seeing signals corresponding to other GDDP molecule uh, in other regions as well. But close to the contact, we clearly see strong nitrogen and boron signal, uh, which means this is reducing the uh, friction as well as wear of the lubricant uh, of the overall system. So next uh, study is on magnesium alloys, but I will not present it due to lack of time. I uh, thought I, I had uh, 25 minutes, but uh, seems like we are running late. So I'll stop here. Uh, if you're interested, you can uh, uh, refer to this paper in advanced engineering materials, which we published on magnesium alloys, where we looked at effect of microstructure on uh, this interaction of lubricant additives with magnesium alloys. Uh, and this was the first study on magnesium alloys uh, or aluminum alloys at nanoscale using this technique. So we are trying to see if we can understand real engineering systems uh, and interaction of real industrial lubricant additives at nanoscale with these important alloys that can give us very useful information, which can be useful for uh, uh, various industrial applications.
as well as for scientific understanding of these important materials. So yeah, uh, I will not go through magnesium alloys results. The conclusion is again, it's a new approach which we demonstrate and uh, we can study lubricant additives on real engineering alloys uh, and look at the effect of microstructure uh, quite well with this uh, approach. With this, I would like to acknowledge my previous collaborators, my previous advisor, Professor Karpik, uh, and ExxonMobil colleagues, my current collaborators, my funding agencies. And uh, I would also like to highlight that we are in organizing a tribology conference uh, in New Delhi uh, in December this year. So you all are invited if you have time and interest to travel to India. Uh, there's a lot of tourist attractions nearby. So I think there's a lot of motivation to travel uh, if you have, if you can manage. Yeah, with this, I would like to thank you for your time and thank you very much. To my <clears throat> thank you very much. Questions? Uh, thank you. Work. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Very interesting talk. So, as you've shown, uh, the type of substrate really influences the tribofilm growth. So, I was just yeah. wondering uh, uh, the type of tip you used for the very first experiment uh, you showed. Because uh, was it steel? And also, what is the model lubricant uh, you, you use? What is the kind of oil? Thanks. Uh, you mean the multi aspirity contact or single aspirity contact? Yeah, multi aspirity contact. Okay, so so first one we we had so that was done in uh, UPenn, uh, and this was a company called Nano Steel. They provide this steel, very high hardness steel microsphere, which is used for sand blasting. So these microspheres of steels were attached to the cantilever. But later on, the studies I did, I tried to eliminate iron because there's a lot of controversy about iron catalyzing the tribochemical reaction. So I tried to eliminate iron in later studies, which was done on non-ferrous alloys like aluminum and silicon, aluminum, silicon, and magnesium alloys. So I used an alumina probe. So these alumina probes are ultra smooth, nanometer or a uh, couple of nanometer rough. These are alumina probes. So there is no iron in the system. So to eliminate iron, I use those uh, alumina probes later on. And I still see ZDDP tribofilm forming when there is no iron at all in the system. Uh, but it, and also it forms where the contact stresses are high, like these pre precipitates of magnesium aluminum alloy, uh, MG17, AL12, and also these silicon precipitates in aluminum silicon alloy. These are hard precipitates. So there we see this film formation very occurring very readily, whereas the soft alloy, soft phases around the precipitate, they undergo wear. Uh, uh, unless we tried this addition of HBN to the lubricant, it showed some promising results that some reduction of the soft matrix can be achieved by tweaking with the chemistry of the lubricant. And but what was yeah, the oil? Sorry, what was the oil that you use? What was the oil? So the base oil is, we use two types of oil. One is PaO4, polyalpha olefin 4. Uh, uh, and it, there's another oil, uh, group 2 base oil. It's called MAC 65, which is which we obtain here from one of the industry. So these are standard base oils which are used in automotive engine uh, lubricants. So PAO4 is more standard, it's globally available. I think even in uh, UPenn, I was using that from ExxonMobil, they, they provided us that. It is available here as well. So we can use it, use the same oil. And it, usually it's very inert. We don't see anything happening if we just use the base oil, no reaction, nothing. So. So it's quite, we are confident, confident that that is not affecting any of the results. Okay. Especially the tribofilm formation. Yeah. There is a question from the remote. Yes, I hope the connection works. Um, did you see any correlation of the stiffness of the films depending on the stiffness of the substrate? 
or or did you not look at the still so of the phosphate film. I have so far not started looking at it because it's very, very tricky to measure because what happens when you try to measure mechanical properties of these films, the tip picks up something and you get all sorts of results. So, uh, so yeah, it is something which is what we want to do in future, but so far we have not quantified the mechanical properties of the tribal film, but it's, it's very important. and. I believe, especially in aluminum silicon alloy, we see that thickness and roughness of the film is very different in the neighboring regions. So that's where we should expect a lot of difference in the mechanical property as well as chemical property, but that is even more challenging to quantify because it's such a small area. How will we quantify chemical information with, with good okay. precision? I'm not sure. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> With that, we thank uh, Nitya Goswami very much. Thank you. Thank you. So now we should uh, have the last. Uh